Hey guys, and welcome back to Tab's Cottage. Today we'll be doing chapter 34 of the Elf Stones of Shannara. I hope y'all enjoy it. Let's get started. They had been asleep several hours when they heard the noises at the door of their room. Will came awake first, sitting upright in the bed with a start peering through a deep night blackness. He could hear sounds without a shuffling of feet, whispered voices, heavy breathing. Not demons, he told himself quickly, but the chill within him would not subside. The latch on the door jiggled as hands worked quietly to free it. Amber Lee was awake as well, sitting next to him, her face white within the shadow of her long chestnut hair. Will put a finger to his lips. Wait here. Silently, he slipped from the bed and moved to the door. The latch continued to rattle, but the veil men had thrown the bolts above it, so the room was secure. He bent toward the doorway and listened. The voices without were low and muffled. Careful, fool. Just lift it. I am lifting it. Step out of the light. Waste of time. Just break it in. There's enough of us. Not if he uses magic. The gold is worth the risk. Break it. The voices argued on, whispers laced with the slur of ale mixed with grunts and ragged breathing. There were at least half a dozen men out there. The veil man decided thieves and cutthroats most probably undoubtedly led to them by the idle tongues of someone who had heard the tale of their miraculous cure of the proprietress of the inn and who could not resist a few embellishments and retelling of the story. He backed away hurriedly, groping for the bed. Amberly's hand gripped his arm. We have to get out of here, he whispered. Wordlessly, she moved off the bed into the dark. They had slept in their clothes, and it took them only moments to pull on the travel cloaks and boots. Will hastened to the window at the rear of the room and pushed it open. Immediately below, a veranda roof sloped downward from the wall. From its edge, there was a drop of a dozen feet to the ground. Will turned back to find Amberly again and brought her to the window. Out you go, he whispered and took her arm. In that same instant, there came a loud oaf from the hall and a heavy body crashed into the door. Splintering boards and metal fastenings, the would-be thieves had lost their patience. Will all but shoved the elven girl through the open window, glancing back hurriedly to see if the intruders had broken through completely. They had not. The door was still held, but then the door was struck again. This time, the bolt gave way into the room, surged a knot of cloaked figures, stumbling over one another, cursing and yelling. Will did not wait to see what might happen next. Scrambling to the window, he leaped hurriedly into the veranda roof. Jump! He yelled to Amber Lee, who crouched in front of him. The elven girl slipped over the edge of the roof and dropped to the earth below. In a moment's time, Will was beside her. Above them, leaning through the open window, the clothed figure shouted in anger. Will pulled Amber Lee back within the shadows of the building, then looked about hurriedly. Which way? He muttered, suddenly confused. Wordlessly, Amber Lee took his hand and sprinted to the end of the wall, then broke for the building next to the end. The shouts of their pursuers rose sharply, followed by the sound of booted feet on the veranda roof. Valman and Elven Girl ran silently through the darkness of the building, slipping down passageways through alleys and along walls until at last they were back to the edge of the main roadway. Still, the shouts pursued them. Grimpen wards seemed to come suddenly awake, lights flaring in darkened buildings all about them, voices raising in anger. Amber Lee started out into the roadway, but Will pulled her hastily back. Less than a hundred feet away in front of the candlelight inn, several dark forms fanned out onto the road, searching carefully the shells about them. We have to go back, the veilman whispered. They retraced their steps following the wall of the building until they reached its end. A series of sheds and stalls stood clustered together against the dark backdrop of the forest. Will hesitated. If they tried to escape into the forest, they would become hopelessly lost. They had to work their way back around the buildings to where the main roadway wound south out of Rimpen Ward. Once beyond the town, they would probably not be pursued further. Cautiously, they moved along the rear of the buildings. Walls and fences hemmed them in on all sides, and barrels of trash cluttered the pathway forward. But the shouts had quieted now, and the buildings ahead were still dark. A few minutes more, and they might be clear of their pursuit. They turned down a narrow alley, 
that ran through a row of stables behind a feed store. Horses wickered softly at their scent, stamping impatiently within their stalls. A small paddock stretched out before them beyond a line of sheds. Will started along the paddock fence with Amber Lee at his side. They had taken no more than a dozen steps when a sharp cry went up behind them. From out of the shadows of the feed store, a dark form appeared, arms waving, voice raised in alarm. Answering cries sounded from the buildings beyond. Startled by the suddenness of their discovery, Velma and the Elven girl stumbled over one another in their haste to flee, lost their footing, and went down. Instantly, their pursuer was on top of them. Arms flailed and fists pummeling wildly. Will grappled with the man, a wiry fellow reeking of ale. As Amber Lee rolled clear, his hands fastened on his attacker's cloak. For a sudden heave, Will threw the man sideways onto the paddock. Oh, we have another picture. I wonder what this is about. I don't think we've gotten to that part yet. I always love that you can see little pictures in this book. That looks like Will and Amber Lee, like Amber Lee taking care of Will. <laughs> I wonder what's going to uh, show up. There was a sharp whack as the man's head struck the fence boards and he collapsed in a heap. Will scrambled back to his feet. Lights came on in the rooms above the feed store and in the surrounding buildings. In the darkness behind them, torchlight flickered through the night. Cries of pursuit sounded from everywhere. The veil man seized Amberly's hand and they raced together along the rim of the paddock to the line of sheds. There they turned back toward the main roadway following a narrow alley that ran between two shuttered buildings. Shadows darkened the passage and the two ran blindly, Will leading. Ahead, the earthen lights of the roadway slipped into view. Will, Amber Lee cried out in warning. Too late. The veiled man's eyes were not as sharp as the elven girl's, and he stumbled headlong into a pile of loose spores strewn across the alley passage. Down he tumbled, crashing into the side of the building. Pain exploded in his head. For an instant, he lost consciousness completely. Then somehow he was back on his feet, weaving forward dizzily. Amber Lee's voice, a faint buzzing in his ear, his hand reached for, her, for his forehead and came away wet with blood. Abruptly, the elven girl was next to him, her arms wrapped tightly about his waist. He sagged against her weakly, forcing himself to stagger ahead toward the distant light of the street. He felt himself blacking out again and fought against it. He had to keep moving. He had to keep awake. Amberly was talking to him, her voice urgent, but he could not make out the words. He felt like a fool. How could he have let something this stupid happen now? They staggered clear of the alley and turned into the shadows of a porch. Down its length, they stumbled. The elven girl fighting to keep the veilman on his feet. Blood ran down into Will's eyes, blinding him further, and he muttered in anger. Suddenly, her Amber Lee gasped in surprise. Through the haze that blurred his vision, he watched a tangle of shadows appear out of the dark. Voices sounded low and rough, and there was a hiss of warning. Then Amber Lee was gone, and he felt himself being lifted. Strong hands bore him quickly through the dark. There was a swirl of color before his clouded eyes mingled with a rush of torchlight. Then he was being lifted again, this time through a narrow opening of canvas flaps. An oil lamp flickered beside him. Voices sounded, whispers of caution, and he felt a damp cloth wipe his face clean of blood. Hands worked busily to wrap him in blankets and to place a pillow beneath his head. Slowly, he opened his eyes. He lay in a gaily colored wagon, its walls decorated with tapestries, beads, and bright silks. The veil man started. He knew this wagon. Then his face bent close, dark and sensuous, framed in ringlets of thick black hair. The smile that greeted him was dazzling. I told you we would meet again, Will Olmsford. It was Eretria. Ha, ah, that's awesome. Okay, guys, that's it for chapter 34. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing y'all again at Tab's Cottage. Bye. <laughs>